Uh, we're here at KO Fitness, and I'm joined by Alex Triple Chisholm. Very much a, a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. Thank Appreciate you for the time. It. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is uh, this is always a sweat box. Like, does it ever get old training in South Florida? And it's uh, it's this this dire heat in the middle of the summer. Or is this uh, the time where it's most rewarding when you get hard uh, hard days of work in? Um, every day is hard days of working, and in the heat it helps me in the fight because we train in the gym with no AC. So when we get to the fights, there's always air conditioning, so that helps us a lot you know, in the fights and stuff. So. And we hardly ever train outside. When we train outside, it's mostly just conditioning and running. So most of our training is in the gym. What made you get into boxing? What was this? What was the draw? Um, my whole life, I played football. I grew up playing football up until ninth grade. And then I told my dad I wanted to fight. But the reason why I wanted to fight is because I saw the movie Creed. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and then after I watched that movie, I told my dad that I wanted, I died, my dad I wanted to box. So he was looking around for trainers, and then he brought me here. And then I haven't left the gym ever since. That's pretty wild, because like, I'm a guy who grew up on the Rocky Saga. Oh, really? When Creed came back, it was like, wow, they, they really nailed it with this. But yeah. to hear somebody your age say, like, Creed was the draw, is pretty, it's, yeah. it's pretty baffling. But what was it about that movie? What was the, the thing in it that just made you want to do it? Um, I, just, I grew up watching Rocky, too. But when I've seen Creed, it just gave me chills. Like, yeah. I just said, like, oh, snap, I want to do this. Like, I was screaming the whole movie, like, just getting excited and stuff. <laughs> So I, just, I felt like I felt the hype during the movie. So I felt like, damn, I could do this in real life. And so then I just fell in love with it. How did you, uh, what, what boxing gym, how did you choose the, your first place to go to to go um, play? Was it, uh, my, were, you, were you nervous going the first time? Not necessarily. I wasn't nervous. My dad had a friend. I forgot his name, but my dad had a real close friend. He asked um, what gym he should bring me to. And then my, dad, my, uh, my dad's friend said, bring them to Mike and Chino. They train in Hialeah Gardens. Mm -hmm. And then... My dad just brought me here one day after school, and then he brought me here like on a Thursday, and then that next Monday I was in the gym. So are you uh, you also a guy who's looking to have big Olympic dreams? Is that is that something that's very important? Yes, to you? sir. That's what I'm training when for that, right now. Uh, when did that come into your head? Ninth ninth grade. Really? My first Monday, I came into the gym. Chino, my my trainer, said we're training for the 2020 Olympics, and this was in 2015, 2016. And did that, does that blow you away? Like a certain, because you're, that's a, that's a young age, ninth, ninth grade. Like you, sometimes people are in and out of sports. They're not quite sure what they want to do. And think about the Olympics. That's that far down the road. Was that a, was that, uh, was that big in the, in the, in the moment? Or did you feel like, yeah, yeah all right, it, let's go. Yeah, it was big in the moment. I honestly, like when I was that age, I didn't think like I would be this good of a fighter. So I didn't really believe in myself that I could make it to the Olympics. But the more I trained, the more my coaches just kept on pushing me and believed in me the more confidence I had in myself and I just got better over time and then I decided to believe in that people to the Olympics. When did, what, like, do you remember a certain moment? Was it a certain session? Was it a certain fight? What was the, the time where you're like, yes, I, I feel like I belong? Um, my first nationals. My first nationals is when I knew I belonged in the sport for a long time, but when I knew I really had it, it was my first nationals. I went to um, Tennessee um, and I only had like 10 fights fighting against kids with like 100, 150 fights. And then I beat the number one kid in the country. And then after that, I just set my mind on, like, yeah, this is my life. Like, this is my career. A lot, uh, a lot of fighters say they like being good at everything. It's very important to be good at everything. But, like, do you have uh, a favorite part of your arsenal that you like when you're in a fight? And if you have it going your way, this is what you like to unload on somebody? Um, usually, my, my, my best weapon is my, my two, my, uh, my straight right hand. I use that a lot in the fight. Whenever I know I'm dominant over the fight, beating somebody constantly, like I just set up the right hand. Uh, nickname Trouble, how'd you get it? <laughs> because <laughs> as a kid, I was always in trouble, in and out of fights, getting kicked out of school. So I was always in trouble, so the nickname just stuck with me. Uh, well, uh, how, how involved are, is, is your dad with your fight career now? Like, does, he, does he watch a lot? Is he a big oh, fan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't come to all the fights because now... I fight out of town, yeah. but he, he watches it online. But with the time that I did fight uh, in town, like in Orlando, like in uh, Sunrise, he would always come. But yeah. now that I fight out of town, like, he just watches it over the computer. Are there, uh, are there certain boxers that you looked up to? Who were the guys that, that uh, you liked to bes my, besides Adonis Creed? Like, who were the, who were the, the real guys that you, uh, my you looked to? My, uh, my favorite uh, old school fighter, all time fighter, is Thomas Hearns. Really? But people are going to laugh at me now because my favorite fighter right now is Adrian Broner. Really? Yeah. What's that? Talker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he is. I love that about him. Yeah. And then he was, I know he loses a lot now, but when he was in his prime, he was, he was the man. 
He really was. It's it's a funny thing with Adrian because it's you got to have a certain belief because there's going to be almost more pressure on you putting all that stuff out there. Like it's in a weird marketing sense, but when you have an arena full of booing yeah. people, that takes a certain kind of tough skin. Yeah, you know, it's not easy. Um, so yeah, he is a guy that that you know everybody looked to as a lot of promise, but to add that extra element was smart on him because people care about watching him fight. It doesn't yep. really matter. That is true. People do love watching him fight. Uh, they just like the hype about him. They like the hype. They like to see what he's going to bring to the table, even though they feel like he's going to lose. Like they still, they're still excited to watch his fights. Even with the Manny Pacquiao fight, they knew he was going to lose, but it's th he still <laughs> talked his way into the fight and got him to sell tickets and like big fight for him. Do you think that's something you're going to bring in your career? Somebody? Uh, do you think you're going to go to that mental warfare kind of area where you're going to uh, want to talk stuff that bothers your opponent, or? Um, are you just going to let the skills speak themselves? Because uh, talking, if you're good at talking, is, is a way to get attention. It yep. is, it is, it is, it is to, helpful. To be honest, I'm humble, but I'm going to do a little bit of both. I'm going to talk, get in my, my opponent's head, but I'm going to also let my hands speak for themselves. I appreciate the time, man. I really enjoy the conversation. And we'll follow the journey. Thank you.